Thank you very much. Thank you. Charles and Carol, and I, I appreciate the, those words, but as I always say, everything we get done is all of us one by one, and I appreciate all of you of being members of this historic organization, the National Rifle Association. You know, as we gather here today, you and I have lived, never lived through a moment like this one right now. In all of our lives, there's never been a time when anti-gun politicians have been responsible for more death and destruction than going on right now in our country. You know it, an unprecedented wave of violence is sweeping across our beloved nation. And it's fueled by a deep-seated hatred for mainstream American values. And it's actively encouraged by politicians who openly despise America's founding freedoms, the same freedoms that we, as NRA members, cherish and revere and we defend. It's all out in the open, and it's plain to see. The same governors who want to disarm law-abiding citizens have unlocked prison cells and released tens of thousands of violent felons back up on the streets of our country, probably in a lot of the areas where you live. Murder rates are skyrocketing in our cities and towns. Wanton destruction is blazed across our TV screens as we watch night after night for months on end. While law enforcement officers, our nation's beloved law enforcement officers, have been forced to stand down in the face of fire bombers and looters and armed violent thugs. And as our cities have burned, and our lives have been cut tragically short. What have gun ban politicians done? They've gone out and promoted the policies of the left. And they've painted a bright red target right on freedom's back. Taking aim at your values, at your political views, and at your lawful right to own a firearm. I mean it. We never could have imagined this level of an insanity, insanity unleashed in our United States of America. You, you, you probably shake your head every day at it. You got major political leaders that are out there actually enabling mob rule while declaring that American freedom should be killed off. Make no mistake. No matter where you live, the breakdown in civil society that's sweeping across our nation is a clear and present danger to your home, to your personal safety, and to the very people that you love. From coast to coast, those same cowardly politicians who want to disarm law-abiding Americans are actively surrendering our cities and towns to violent mobs. And let me give you a few examples. You may have read about, read about them also. In Chicago, gun-hating Mayor Lori Lightfoot has allowed her city to be transformed into a war zone. Countless Chicago businesses and homes have been destroyed by arsonists and looters. Citizens have watched in absolute horror as thousands of felons have had their charges dropped. And in the most gun-controlled city in the United States, you have citizens sleeping on the floor in fear of stray bullets from so-called peaceful protesters and warring gangs. But instead of getting tough on criminals, Lightfoot has diverted dozens of police officers to protect her own residents. 
declaring that, and I'm quoting her right here, I have a right to make sure my home is secure. And then she called for more anti-gun laws aimed at disarming law-abiding citizens. The sad thing is, she's not alone. Right in Virginia, where your NRA headquarters is, gun ban Governor Ralph Northam signed multiple anti-gun bills into law this past year. He even slashed penalties for assaulting police officers. Can you believe that? And he set thousands of convicted felons free to roam the streets, including one who went out and executed a law enforcement officer. In Portland, Oregon, and I know I don't have to tell you about this, but let's do it. In Portland, Oregon, anti-gun mayor Ted Wheeler actually apologized to the mobs when law enforcement officers tried to intervene after more than 100 straight days of rioting. But when protesters arrived in his neighborhood, he put his tail between his legs and he fled the city. It's in Philadelphia, District Attorney Larry Krasner has allowed seven times as many criminals to walk free compared to the previous DA, including gun criminals. Krasner openly brags that keeping criminals out of prison and on the streets is his, quote, proudest accomplishment. It's unbelievable. In the meantime, Philadelphia is suffering a historic crime wave in that city, and law-abiding people like you and me are stuck waiting one full year just to apply for a right to carry permit, and with it, the chance to save our own lives. In Minneapolis, the city council, and you know this, they actually voted to dismantle the police department and then used taxpayers' dollars to hire private security for protection of their own homes and families. And in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo and Mayor Bill de Blasio, anti-gun extremists to the core, They've adopted policies that have led to a crime wave like New York City hasn't seen in 50 years in that city. They've teamed up to eliminate cash bail, empty the prisons, dissolve the 600-member anti-crime unit that was getting criminals and their illegal guns off the streets. This is exactly the same governor who, in his own words, tried to put the NRA out of business by hounding and harassing any financial institution who would partner with the National Rifle Association. And his hand-picked Attorney General, General Letitia James has now filed a politically motivated lawsuit attempting to dissolve, dissolve the National Rifle Association and it's motivated by her own personal view that the NRA is, quote, a terrorist organization. Think about that. That's right. In Cuomo and James' world, it's insane. Violent criminals are the victims, and the real enemy is you because you joined together under the NRA banner to protect your constitutional freedoms. It's all beyond crazy what we're dealing with. I mean, you hardly even know what to say about it. In every one of those cities and states where criminals are running rampant and honest citizens are now living in abject fear, the leftist playbook, it's wide open for anyone to see. It goes like this. Empty the prisons. Ignore the mayhem that's going on. 
hamstring our police officers, surrender the streets, and build an armed wall of defense around their own homes and families. And then, after they do that, hold freedom hostage and demand that honest citizens give up their guns. We've never seen anything like this in the history of this nation. We've never seen so many American lives put at extreme risk by radical anti-gun politicians in pursuit of their own freedom-killing agenda. This time, it's not just our Second Amendment rights that are at stake. It's our country as we know it. And it's literally our own right to survive. The left, they believe the right to self-defense should be reserved only for government officials and wealthy elites like Bloomberg. But citizens, normal people like you and me, have to give up our guns and give up our right to self-defense. But let me tell you right here and right now and for the record in front of this whole country, we will not submit, we won't give an inch, we will not surrender our freedom. In fact, we have our own list of demands with no middle ground and no compromise. And let me go through them right now. Before one more American becomes a needless casualty in this war on our nation's heritage and on our freedom, before one, working, before one more hardworking mom or dad becomes a tragic crime statistic, before one more honest citizen becomes a chalk line on a city sidewalk, we demand that civil society be restored. We, we, we demand that criminals do hard time for hard crime. We, we demand that taxpaying citizens get the police protection they deserve. And as you applaud this, I know the majority of Americans are right there with us applauding. And we demand that every law-abiding American have the sacred right guaranteed by our Constitution to keep and bear arms to protect ourselves and our loved ones in the face of violent criminal danger. Our demands are for justice for the law-abiding people of our great country. And our demands are deeply rooted in our Constitution and rooted in the guiding principles of freedom that make America the greatest nation in the world. As we gather here today, we know, you know, the eyes of the nation in fact, the eyes of history are upon us all. And you know what? That's a good thing. Because every American at this moment of time deserves to hear the truth. And here's the truth. There's a difference between democracy and anarchy. There's a difference between criticism and insurrection. There's a difference between peaceful protest and mob tyranny. And there's a difference between acting within the law and acting outside the law. These are basic truths. And no matter how much freedom-hating politicians and their dishonest allies in the media try to twist them, pervert them, and downright destroy them, the five million men and women of a National Rifle Association will always fight for these truths. Yeah. 
Our fight as men and women of the NRA is to protect the freedoms upon which our democracy was built. We don't do battle with bullets. We fight with ballots. We don't train for revolt in the streets. We train for safety in schools and shooting ranges and police departments. We don't break laws. We help make laws. And we don't sit home and complain about bad government. We go out and vote and elect good government. We, the men and women of the National Rifle Association, appeal to the best instincts of humanity. Freedom for all, regardless of gender, race, or creed. Individual liberty and the responsibility that comes with it. Respect for the rule of law. Love for our country and all of our fellow Americans. We are the oldest and most successful civil rights organization in history. And throughout history, NRA's fight for civil rights has seen us not only defending the Second Amendment, but also the First Amendment. That's right. We've been right there defending the First Amendment when needed also. <laughs> Let me give you one example. 18 years ago, when anti-freedom politicians in Washington tried to muzzle political speech. They actually tried to make it a crime to mention the name of any candidate for office 60 days before an election unless you own the media outlet. You know what? It was the NRA and the American Civil Liberties Union and others who fought back to defend the First Amendment. And today, as Governor Cuomo and his Attorney General Letitia James continue to weaponize government power. Think about that. Weaponize government power to silence and destroy your voice, my voice, and the voices of all NRA members. We are fighting back again with the help of the American Civil Liberties Union and others to defend not only our right to free speech, but the First Amendment rights of all Americans. Because if they can do it to us, they can do it to anyone else in America also. You, you know, you've heard me say it before, but let me say it again. When you fight for freedom, you get more of it. And by fighting together over the past four decades, my gosh, we've achieved a historic restoration of freedom that all Americans in this country can be thankful for. Think about it. We passed a law securing the right of law-abiding citizens to travel throughout the United States with their firearms. We rewrote the entire 1968 Gun Control Act. If we hadn't have done that, our freedoms would have been trampled. We passed preemption bills in virtually every state so you don't have to deal with some crazy patchwork quilt of city and town and local gun laws if you want to simply travel around your own state with your firearm. We passed range protection laws and laws preventing hunter harassment. And we stopped government from denying access to millions of acres of hunting land. We passed emergency power laws so government officials can never again confiscate your guns in a state of emergency like they did after Hurricane Katrina and leave you completely defenseless at a time when you need your firearm the most. And we passed laws arming America's airline pilots and our nation's retired police officers castle doctrine laws, and together we saved the American firearms industry by passing federal legislation that stopped predatory lawsuits that if we hadn't have done it, would have driven every American firearms manufacturer out of business. And we passed, and this may be the greatest of all, right to carry laws 
in over 40 states so you never have to face evil with empty hands. I'm old enough that I remember when we first started on that mission. It's hard to believe now, but it's true. There were only about three states in the United States with decent right to carry laws on the books. But boy, we started out and we had a wind to our back of Americans all over this country. And working one by one, working together, we changed it. And through the landmark Heller and McDonald Supreme Court decisions, we affirmed what our founding fathers plainly wrote in the Second Amendment. And what we all know to be true, that our right to keep and bear arms is a guaranteed, natural, individual right that no government can take away from us. And there is no other organization in the country that is directly responsible for the election of two recent US presidents, thousands of US senators, representatives, and state legislators, and hundreds of pro-freedom judges that came from those victories. Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett. All of this, all of it, and it's, it's amazing. It amounts to a brick by brick restoration of our freedom. And it was accomplished by all of you and people just like you all over the country that have a burning desire for freedom in their hearts, who never surrendered, never stopped fighting to preserve, strengthen, defend, and win back our freedom. I want you, as we sit here, to never forget that it all could have been lost, like is sadly the case in so many other countries. But together, we, we, we did it together. We saved it, each of us. You know, after everything's said and done, we win because we fight for truth and justice. There are about 25,000 violent crimes a week in the United States. The 911 calls, if you've ever listened to them, and I know a lot of you probably have, they're chilling. They hear that voice on the other end of the call, the terror is, is, is the worst, one of the worst things you can ever listen to. The statistics are numbing. The innocent in this country are being preyed upon. Everyone knows it. Who's more responsible for protecting our lives and the lives of our loved ones than each of us? Why should I, or why should you, give up my right to survive? I want to say in my own destiny, by refusing to arrest, prosecute, and incarcerate violent criminals, politicians abdicate their responsibility to protect anyone. So we're not going to apologize for defending our most basic freedom. Because far too often in this dangerous world, the Second Amendment is all we have. Fact is, yeah, amen. The fact is, at the scene of the crime, it's most often just the criminal and the victim. That's who's there, the criminal and the victim. Despite all the best intention, of the police men and women. The truth is, when seconds matter, they're minutes away. In fact, the national average is 11 minutes. And if a growing number of anti-gun politicians have their way, the police, they're not going to be there at all. We all know that human society is best served when the good people can arm themselves. And we all know that at the very root of American consciousness is the truth that I have a right to defend myself. The hypocrisy is even the gun ban elitists know that truth. They all have armed protection. 
They lean on their political connection, connections to gain the system. They get their permits. They all do. If you're a celebrity, if you're a billionaire, if you're some Wall Street executive, if you're a friend of the mayor, they all get the permits. They get all the permits they want. They all believe strongly in their Second Amendment rights. They just don't believe in yours. Why? Because they're nothing but a bunch of elitists. And the history of the gun control movement has always, always been rooted in elitism. Let me tell you something else. It's also been rooted in racism, terror, and oppression of the worst kind. The very first gun control laws put in force after the Civil War were designed for the specific and singular purpose of denying African Americans their Second Amendment rights. Why? Because the racist politicians and their allies in the Ku Klux Klan wanted to oppress and terrorize African Americans at will and without resistance. It was the NRA from our founding that fought for and helped secure the Second Amendment rights of African Americans and all Americans. I remember attending the dedication of the Buffalo Soldiers Monument. In fact, your NRA donated to that to honor the regiments of African American soldiers who fought in the Civil War, in every war right up through World War II. At that event, I remember one of those heroic veterans who fought in the Second World War. I, I still remember his name. It was James Madison. He was 94 years old. And he walked up to me, and he reached for his wallet, and he pulled out a crumpled old membership card from the 40s, and he showed it to me with pride. The fact is that before the color line was broken in professional sports, before it was broken in schools and lunch lines and water fountains, in the media and out there in Hollywood, before all of that, and since our founding, the National Rifle Association of America has not only welcomed all Americans, we have fought for the civil rights and constitutional freedom for all Americans. And I swear to God, I promise you, we will never ever stop fighting for the right of every law-abiding American to protect themselves with a gun. You know, like yesterday, I still remember that powerful news clip, a lot of you probably will too, from Hurricane Katrina, when a reporter walked up and asked an African-American woman, uh, she was sitting on her porch in the midst of all the looting and lawlessness and devastation that was going on. The reporter asked her if she was okay. And she paused for just a minute, kind of looked down and thought, and then she said, I have my Bible, and I have my gun. I'm fine. <laughs> Our strength is in the hearts of Americans just like her all across this country. And so to the political class and their media allies, I say, if you don't care about our Second Amendment right to protect ourselves, then you don't care about us at all. Don't, yep, don't go talking to us about your plans for safety unless you defend our Second Amendment. Don't go out there and go on TV again lamenting another tragic violent crime unless you defend our Second Amendment rights. And don't give us your empty rhetoric and those sound bites because we're all on to you. We don't believe you. You're not honest. 
because you would deny us, all of us, our most basic fundamental right to stay alive. In spite of the diversity of opinion that comes with five million members, we are all still united by a single promise. It's a promise that when you think about it, we first made when we were kids. Kids. And it goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. I implore and beg all of you, don't let the chaos of the current events tarnish the majesty of its meaning, of what we just all said together. We don't promise to try when it's convenient. We pledge our allegiance, not to who's powerful or who's popular, but to the flag of the United States of America, and not just of the stars and stripes, but to the republic for which it stands, which isn't one faction, but one nation, not under tyranny, but under God, not divided, but indivisible, with liberty and with justice, not for a few, but for all. My friends, we've now come to a point in time when the full weight of that promise rests squarely on our shoulders on each of you in this room, and people like you in states and towns all over the country. A single national election will take place just 10 days from now. And you and I don't have to guess what will happen if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win. Biden and Harris are running for the White House on the public promise to flat out decimate the Second Amendment and destroy the promise of liberty and freedom that is America. They don't want to simply regulate your gun rights or chip away at your freedom around the edges. They are vowing to register, ban, and confiscate your firearms. These are the stakes, and they couldn't be higher. I know many folks are beaten down by the seemingly endless stream of struggles that this past year has presented everyone. And those working against us, they're working overtime to convince Americans that the Second Amendment's days are numbered, that our children and our grandchildren will never know the freedom and opportunity that you and I enjoy today. But I say they're wrong. I say that with a full confidence because of NRA members like all of you. As a member of the National Rifle Association, your voice resonates far beyond this room. It carries far beyond the walls of your own home. It resonates far and wide, and it carries the weight of millions of NRA members and tens of millions of more Americans who support our cause and they look to us for leadership. There is no more unstoppable force in the history of American politics than NRA members like all of you. And when you stand and when you fight, freedom wins. So from where you sit right now, I'm asking you to fight. Fight, not only by getting out and voting for Donald Trump and every NRA-endorsed candidate on the ballot, but get out and rally your friends and neighbors to do the same. Fight, 
like your very right to survival is on the line in this national election, fight with the same freedom-loving spirits our founding fathers fought with when they established the greatest nation on earth. And let history remember that when freedom was on the line, you were there. You fought back. You stood in the breach. You defended America and our Constitution. And you were the reason our Second Amendment rights, our American values, and our freedom not only survived, but thrived for decades to come. Thank you. Never lose faith. And always, every one of you, keep fighting for freedom. Thank you very much. Let's go forward and do it.